I've been playing around with different solutions to try to measure the state of charge on my boat's battery. And I haven't exactly been happy with any of the solutions. Um, and, and then I, I came upon uh, this device. It's a, um, this one came in the mail. This is actually a second one I ordered. I ordered this one off of uh, eBay. Um, I think for $31 that came in from uh, China. Um, the first one I ordered I got off of Amazon. I'm not sure even if Amazon carries them anymore. And I think that was about $46. And um, I was encouraged enough um, with the progress I was making, basically reverse engineering this thing. That's why I ordered a second one. Um, so I could put one on my boat, um, which is where I in, in, intend to uh, measure the state of charge on my batteries there. Um, while I still had a second one to um, continue to do development work on. So what what attracted me to this? Uh, this is a Juntec uh, VAT1300 and basically what you get in the box is the uh, shunt um, which is capable of measuring up to 300 amps and um, it um, can measure uh, voltages from 0 volts up to 100 volts. They have different models, um, some higher current, some lower current. Um, the, the lower current ones, um, I think there's a 30 amp version that has an internal relay. Um, you can basically set different conditions for like uh, under voltage, over current um, to be able to basically disconnect your load. Um, this has that same over voltage, under voltage, over current uh, functionality, but it requires uh, wiring in an external relay. I don't actually intend to do that. Um, I'm more interested in keeping track of the state of charge. Um, given that my boat, it's a 12 volt boat, 12 volt uh, system on my boat, I've got two 200 amp um, advanced glass mat lead acid batteries on there. Um, no reason this wouldn't work with any chemistry. It's It basically counts the current, keeps track of the current going in and out of the battery. Um, the more technical term for these is, is a Coulomb counter. Um, but um, Basically what you get in the box is, is the shunt, the uh, controller, USB cable. This is capable of being, be capable of being either tethered uh, with USB or running wirelessly, which the wireless thing uh, really attracted me. There's a um, couple of manuals um, that aren't the best, um, but they give you a basic idea how to hook things up. Kind of a quick start guide and a more extensive manual. Um, a, um, a plug for hooking this up to uh, power for power or it can get uh, power through the USB. Um, forget the range on here, it says 12 volts. Um, I guess that's 12 volts nominal coming in. I think it's a wider voltage range than that. Um, I know, for example, uh, it'll work off 5 volts um, on the USB. And then um, something else that's kind of interesting um, for um, although it, it simply just statically displays your um, temperature um, the intent of this is I guess you'd somehow uh, physically attach this to your batteries to measure the battery voltage battery temperature don't think the uh, computer in here actually takes that into account in any way when it's looking at your state of charge um, but nonetheless it's there but um, like I said, one of the things that attracted me to this is that it, it was wireless and um, it um, reportedly had these NRF24 NRF L01s in them or L01 pluses um, and I thought if that's really the case there's maybe potential I could, um, it was very popular amongst hobbyists uh, or like Arduino or a Raspberry Pi um, hooking up to do uh, wireless communication. They work in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Um, they're they're uh, a simpler, you know, something simpler than Bluetooth. Uh, they believe it's a proprietary um, communication, um, but nonetheless, um, very popular and, and relatively easy to use. So I thought, eh, maybe I got a chance of, of being able to uh, reverse engineer that, hook it up to my own system. And the idea being, 
I really wanted to be able to put it on my boat's network. Um, I, I have a, you know, basically a wireless network or wire and wire network on my boat. Um, this basically just keeps all the navigation data, the in um, the NEMA um, 0183 data, and then a few other things. I actually have a number of, of things hooked up to the network in, in my boat, and I thought this would be great. Um, and the idea being having a display where maybe I could graphically look at the state of charge over the day, over a day, or over a week, or over um, you know real time, um, and actually be able to monitor that from from um, you know any any device. Um, and in fact, maybe replace this display with my own display that maybe has some some uh, graphics and stuff in it. So. That's the idea, and maybe set up a, a uh, HTML server so I could even, um, you know, connect to it through a web page, and be able to, you know, look at look at things, bring up graphs and things like that. So that being said, let me go ahead and and uh, talk a little bit more about how this is hooked up. It basically has connections in here for for powering up the electronics in here. This is a like I said a shunt. Um, so let me open it up. It's a little tricky opening it up and it had a lot of difficulty. This top comes off easier than the bottom does. Um, actually, I've already broke at least one tab on the bottom. And I've taken it apart a couple times, take it apart again, but basically this is the, um, there's, a, there's a jumper on here, comes 2W, the manual's kind of cryptic. It basically says 2W uh, is for the 10 to 30 volt range, you put on 3W to be able to go from the 0 to 100 volt range. Now obviously this can't operate off of 0 volts, um, but I think you supply power to these connectors and, and there's no reason your, your battery couldn't be like a 1S uh, lithium ion or for example, a 4 volt, 4 volt battery in there, because this all this does is just measure current and, and, and look at the voltage here, so long as there's enough voltage to power the electronics. Um, you know that's that's all you would really need, and I think there's there's actually looking on here um, a VN and a, a V external. So those are the you know one is uh, uh, one is for the you know powering this module. Um, so I think when you have it in the two W range, it basically uses VN to both power the modules, electronics, and to be the power measurement. And then when you put it on the 3W, um, then I think you're, I, I don't remember which, whether it's V external or VN, but basically you, you hook up one, which is like basically 12 volts to power this module. And then you'd hook up the, uh, I think the V external, basically man, monitor your, your uh, uh, voltage of your batteries. I have a 12 volt system and, you know, so just a single set of batteries. So I'm going to be powering this thing off at 12 volts. So, and given that it goes up to 30 volts, you can put on a 24 volt system or, or most, uh, you know, lithium, lithium uh, systems as well. So let me just leave it at this point and uh, power this thing up and show you basically how it works quick. There's better tutorials on the web. I don't intend to go into uh, depth about um, how to operate, how to go through all the menus. The menus are rather extensive. Um, but um, I'll basically power it up to show you how things function. I have a, a uh, using a 5, 5S uh, lithium cell over here for my power source and then using this, um, this uh, buck converter. Um, these are kind of kind of an interesting device. It's like a mini mini power supply. Um, it's a B3603. It's basically, being a buck converter, um, obviously it's only capable of dropping voltage, but um, you know, I think it can operate up to 30 volts, I believe, uh, input. So this being a 5S, this is around 20 volts. So anyway. So up it comes, and if I uh, um, I got I got it adjusted for 12.25 volts right now. So and if I look at the current, um, if I remember how to do that, it's saying uh, 18 milliamps of current. So I'm not sure how accurate that is. So it's basically the draw of the electronics in here. 
um, and first of all, I'll show you the tethered operation through the USB. Like I say, a nice bright display. Uh, it's basically showing uh, my voltage here. So if I were to um, if I were to toggle the voltage down, I remember how to do that. I got to get it in the right mode. There we go. So I've cranked up the voltage, cranked down the voltage. So anyway, so demonstrates that it can track. Um, these are disagreeing a little bit on the voltage um, slightly. Um, I believe um, I've checked this with the meter, at least I did on my original um, uh, unit, and, and this is accurate. Um, and there's a rather extensive menuing system here for setting like over voltage and uh, or over voltage, lower voltage, over current, under current. I don't know, if, not under current, but over current. Um, and a lot of other features um, as well as there's kind of some hidden menus up here for um, I think a long press the up arrow yeah get you into these um, calibration menus basically for zeroing out or, or compensating for the, for the load uh, this is a shunt um, like I said and the shunt that's in here is a 500 amp 75 millivolt shunt um, so like I said, they spec this for just um, 300 amps um, for whatever reason, and then. Um, but anyway, if I think five, if there's 500 amps flowing through the air, it would have a 75 millivolt drop, um, basically. And this hooks up to your your negative of your your battery, basically, and then basically the rest your whole rest of your load um, to disconnect the all the disconnect the ground off the battery. Put this in series, and basically this this becomes your ground for your your entire system. So, that being said, and just to prove that this does in fact um, work wirelessly, I'll hook it up to uh, another battery. Hook this up to another source here, and basically you see up up it comes. Um, so, um, kind of nice. So, and if I were to um, shut this off and unplug. Basically, you see the, the radio is dropped here. The radio symbol went to an X. So anyway, let's, let me take this the rest of the way apart. So, when I started, uh, basically I hooked a logic analyzer up to look at the the, the signals going in, going to the um, the radio module in here. Um, so there's a there's a radio module in both this unit and in this unit. And all appearances is they were these NRF 24L01s. Um, but um, and I looked at those are um, on a spy interface, which is a common computer interface. And um, basically, what I was trying to do is look at the look at the traffic going in and out of the radios, and try to figure out um, you know what was going on. And I, I kind of you know gathered all the information, hooked the logic analyzer up to this one and to this one, and then I used our, our Arduino uh, Duo. Actually, is what I used initially. Um, and um, I couldn't get the thing to communicate at all. And I was pretty puzzled. Um, I'll show you what I discovered. And let me go ahead and take this the rest of the way apart. Um, this is where I broke one of the tabs off, um, trying to get this thing apart. I'll show you some other mechanically shortcomings of this thing as well. I'm going to probably stop the uh, video while I try to get this out. Actually, I've got to take the rest of these screws out. That would help. That one 
tab broken off, it should come out easier. It's still stubborn. I'm just going to pause the video and see if I can wrestle this thing out of here. Okay, I got it out. So, um, what I did is basically hooked a logic analyzer up. You know, there's there's a, a ton of uh, information about how to program these things, particularly for an Arduino, on the web. Um, it's well documented. How to well, the the manual for these is a little sketchy, um, but there's there's basically a ton of user information in, on the web about you know how to how to use these um, to communicate, um, you know, between two Arduinos or you know any anything else you've got going on. Um, and uh, the the deal was I after extensive um, work going on. Actually, I ordered some more today because um, I kind of been going through them. Usually, I ordered these off of Amazon, and they're pretty cheap. I can get ten of them for I think twelve dollars or something like that, um, which is which is a pretty good deal. Um, Obviously, you only need two of these, um, or one of these is, was was my originally thinking is all I would need is is one on my um, on my computer on my network. Um, but um, what I noticed was um, these these guys have you know uh, packaged um, you know surface mount. I see on here on here the the, the NRF24 LO1 Plus itself. These guys have you know an encapsulated just this blob of epoxy here. Um, and in searching the web, there's scant information, but in searching the web, I discovered that these are basically a uh, Chinese clone of the real device, and they're not 100% compatible. Um, so, it bothered me quite a bit, um, so I thought, uh, I'm, you know, the potential, that I'm not going to be able to, you know, reverse engineer these, or I'm going to have to get the documentation and source some of these uh, low-cost uh, versions of these guys. And um, I searched high and low on eBay and Aliexpress and everywhere else to, to try to find these low-cost versions of these things. They're kind of funny. They, they, they strip off a lot of decoupling capacitors and, and some other things off of here to try to shave off every millicent off of these things. Um, and um, I could not find a source for these. So um, what I did was um, I got pretty daring and, uh, you know, Pause the video one more time where I go fetch fetch something. Okay, this was my my original boards. What I did is is um, I actually socketed them um, and then put headers on here to be able to hook up a logic analyzer to it. Um, so um, I pulled, you know, I, I put put these uh, sockets on here. That's just temporary. Um, so I thought, you know, both for logic analyzer and then for being able to plug these things in and out. And fortunately, uh, I kind of thought there was a hope because when I looked at the, when I deciphered the spy signals, um, you know, everything made sense when you looked at the spec sheet. Um, but why I couldn't talk to it, I, I couldn't couldn't figure out until I, you know, started stumbling on that. So what I did is I put in uh, basically the the authentic modules in, and um, I was very pleased um, with the uh, when I hooked hooked these two up that they continued to, they would talk to each other once I had the real one in both uh, units. So upon doing that, uh, immediately when I when I looked at um, uh, my uh, my Arduino Duo uh, setup, um, I could in fact communicate to it. So that was good. And um, I basically have made fairly good progress uh, decoding uh, all the information that comes across here. It's basically a real-time clock that comes across, the, the current, the, the voltage, 
um, the watts, and then basically you have uh, watt hour and amp hours that come across. Um, the uh, the temperature um, comes across. Um, I guess I didn't really show you where this this plugs in. There's a there's a um, plug plug here. This one's in fact got the temperature unit hooked up to it. So uh, all that stuff comes across. Um, I basically was able to decipher it. Um, um, pretty straightforward the packets that comes across like the, the current is is a binary weighted decimal um, so for negative and positive and that sort of thing so um, that's all pretty straightforward um, and it looks like I'm you know probably going to be able to achieve what I wanted to do um, so while I got this torn apart I'll talk about a few other things this, this is a, a well-documented complaint about this thing. If, if you look, um, they just have the bolts running through the uh, circuit board here and the shunt. Um, um, when, you, when you try to um, uh, torque, torque down your, your uh, cabling up here, basically there's nothing to prevent these from spinning on the backside. Um, if you if you look at this one, um, I got the bolts out right now. But basically, I was digging into the circuit board, and I think all the way down to the the uh, maybe part of the grounding that's inside the inside the circuit board. So, not very good situation. Um, so these aren't very well designed mechanically. You basically think anybody getting these is going to have to take these apart, um, regardless, to be able to torque these things down. And I really recommend putting. You know, putting some 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 washers um, back behind here, um, so so you protect the circuit board um, when you do that as well. So, and the uh, plastic housing isn't very conducive for running large cables. Some um, 300 amps, you know, it you would know, be very difficult to run large cables through here. Um, I'm in fact um, uh, these are um, dramatic overkill. This is. Uh, you know, one and a half by three eighth inch copper, um, but that's this is what I intend to tend to do is is hook hook these up to my uh, my battery and then put the load um, put put this here and then have this have another one over here basically with my my the rest of the rest of my uh, load. So that's the intent. Um, May or may not plate these, um, tin, try to tin plate them or solder plate them or something rather than copper. But anyway, that's that. Um, and um, that's um, basically the, the mechanics behind this. Um, the, uh, removing these guys um, is going to be a little tricky for people that aren't, don't have good soldering skills. And... Um, We'll talk about a little bit about that. Um, yeah, so I'll uh, I'll go ahead and do the rework on here and show you how how at least I did it. Um, so you can you can get an idea of how to do that. And then we'll talk a little bit about the, um, the progress I've made uh, using the Arduino. Um, I think ultimately. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, either a Raspberry Pi um, 0W, um, which would allow me to wirelessly connect it to my uh, boat's network, or um, started playing around with a uh, ESP32, um, which is kind of an interesting device um, that's compatible with the Arduino development environment, and it's basically a... a fairly high performance uh, core, actually a dual core um, device in there and that actually has um, multiple spy ports on it as well too which was something else that's kind of interesting to me. So um, I will go into details on that um, in another um, either potentially on another video um, later on to talk a little bit about the uh, um, the Arduino end of it and the coding and uh, basically some ideas around what I want to do with the graphics display as well so anyway hope that is uh, of some interest to you and uh, we'll be back <laughs>